people who are supportive of you, people who care about you, people who want you to be successful, they want you to achieve all of your goals and dreams, they hold you accountable and they get excited for you when you achieve them. How awesome is that? And if you've experienced that, if you have that in your life, uh, have you told the people in your life how much you appreciate them? If you don't have those people in your life, if you've got people in your life who tell you, you can't do it, it's not possible, you're not good enough, you're too tall, too short, too fat, too skinny, too old, too young, you don't have enough education, you don't have enough experience, you need, you need a backup plan, you can't do it. And the reason they all roll off my tongue so easily is I deal with that every day. Uh, the first part's really exciting. I have literally hundreds of people on a regular basis that share with me their goals and their dreams. I want to be an exercise professional. I want to have my own business. I want to, I've got this great idea, this invention, a creation, and I want to share it with the world. I want to be a rock star. I want to be an artist. I want to be a dancer. I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to be a doctor. I want to be a lawyer. And they're the reasons why people come to an international fitness business college. They want to be an exercise professional and or a business professional and or have a career that they love. So I get very excited listening to people's goals, don't you? <laughs> I just love it. And my question is always, of course we can do that. Of course you can do that. How will we do it? When do you want to make it happen? And here's the plan or let's put a plan together to make it happen. The reverse of that is how many people share their goals with me and somebody in their life steals that dream. Somebody tells them, you can't do it. Uh, interesting with the exercise profession because there's a lot of bad publicity when it comes to being successful in a career path as an exercise professional, as a gym owner, as a personal training studio owner, as a group exercise instructor, a boot camp instructor. It seems there's still a headspace. Unbelievable, but it seems there's still a headspace that this is not a real job. Even though the top medical professionals in the world are strongly suggesting that exercise is medicine, medicine is exercise, when you're healthy, fit and strong, your body can deal with everything better and any challenge that comes along, if you're healthy, fit and strong, whether it's a mental challenge, a physical challenge, a relationship challenge, a business challenge, a disease, a virus, a bug, a germ, your body can handle it better. So if you're an exercise professional, you literally have the ability to prevent and cure the major challenges, physical and mental, in the world. It's a serious career path and one of the most rewarding career paths because not only, like a doctor helps people get better if they're sick, but as an exercise professional, we help people or we prevent people from getting sick in the first place and if they are sick, we help them get better quicker and we make sure they don't get sick again. Yes, I'm pretty bloody passionate about being an exercise professional. But in this world right now, there are still people who tell their family, their friends, uh, the, the people that they care about, that you can't be an exercise professional. I'm just going to use that as an example because I also hear from lots of people who want to be doctors and lawyers and architects and engineers and accountants and they want to do a tertiary education and they have people in their life who tell them you're not smart enough, you don't have enough money, your marks aren't good enough from high school. You can't do that. Whoa, what do you do when somebody tries to steal your dream? Well, I'm coming at you from a very personal place. Mm -hmm. uh, my father sent me to private boarding school in Melbourne, Australia, because he wanted me to be a lawyer. And it was a very strong conversation and a very strong push from a very young age. I remember coming home from primary school and my father asking me about my marks at school and reminding me strongly on a regular basis that I was going to become a lawyer. I was going to university and I would become a top class lawyer. And I was 13 years of age. I did group exercise at my school as a sporting activity. I came home from school and I said to my father, I'm going to be an exercise person. And I said, fitness instructor, uh, exercise instructor. I'm not going to be a lawyer. Uh, and as I so often share, my father could speak seven languages fluently and he swore at me in all seven. There's no way that you're ever going to become an exercise person. You're going to be a lawyer. So what do you do in that situation? Now, I'm, I can't tell you what to do and I would never, never do that. What I will share with you is with or without support of anybody, if you inside know who you are and what you want to do and why you want to do it 
and we often share this at Max, there's two epic moments in your life. Obviously the first epic moment is when you were born because that's when you were put on the planet. The second epic moment is when you find out why you were born. And I'm very privileged that at the age of 13, and I, it's the most spectacular day of my life, I realized that I was born, the reason I'm on the planet is to be an exercise professional. So I'm very privileged to never have had a lousy, stinking, rotten job. I've never worked for a boss I didn't like because I've never had a boss. I've always worked for myself. And every single day of my life, and now that I'm an old lady, I have woken up loving what I do, loving it, excited about getting up, passionate about my life. So of course I want that for everybody. So how does that happen when you don't have the support of your family? And my very personal story is that I did this without my family. I had to do this without my family because they weren't supportive of me. The teachers at my school weren't supportive of me. You're going to be a lawyer. You're here to become a lawyer. I was surrounded with a group of people at school who were also at private boarding school in Melbourne, Australia to become lawyers and doctors and architects and engineers. That's why their parents sent them to private boarding school. So I wanted them to get a top education so that they could become highly educated people. <laughs> And that's awesome if your goal and dream is to become a lawyer or a doctor or an architect or an engineer. But whatever your dream is, uh, I'm very personally asking, please don't let somebody steal your dream. Why would you let somebody steal your dream? If you know that the reason you were put on the planet is to be an artist or to sing or to dance or to create things or to be a business person or to change the world, why would you let somebody steal that from you? So what do you do if you haven't got support from your family, from your friends? And I always ask the reverse question. Uh, if your family and, and friends are supportive of you, then you have no excuse not to be successful. Why are there so many people who, even though they've got their family and friends supporting them, they still don't end up doing what they love to do? And yet there's people who have no support from anybody and they do what they love against all odds. Is it possible it's got nothing to do with the outside? <laughs> Could it have everything to do with the inside? And I can share that again with you personally because I knew from 13 years of age that I was going to be an exercise professional and I was going to do this for the rest of my life. I knew that who I was and what I do were going to be the same thing. So the second epic moment in your life is when you find out why you were born. Number one, I was born. Da -da! Number two... The reason I'm here is because, and if deep down inside your heart and soul, or it doesn't have to be deep down, you just know it, then don't let somebody steal that from you. Would that be a really good thing to consider? Whether you've, you think you've got enough money or, or, not, or you'll never have enough money, whether you think you're smart enough or you'll never be smart enough, whether you, <laughs> whether you can sing or you can't sing, whether you can paint or you can't paint, none of that matters, does it? There are rock stars that can't sing. I don't know how, how long since you've been to a, a, an art gallery, if you go on a regular basis or not, but there's a lot of pieces of art that don't look like the person's very talented and the, and the piece of art is very expensive because there are people who look at that piece of art and absolutely love it. You've just got to find the right target market. So the first question I always ask is, who are you and what do you want to do and why do you want to do it? Uh, if you know that this is who you are and this is what your future needs to be, then would it be a really good idea to not allow anybody to steal your dream or to stop you? Whether there's people supportive of you or not supportive of you, should it matter? Because you're the one that's got to be supportive of you. So number one is what do you want to do? What are you passionate about? What are you excited about? What's driving you? And it's interesting because I talk to a lot of more mature people, older people, and often people say to me, you know, when I was 15, I wanted to do this, or before I finished school, I wanted to be this, or this, this was my big dream when I was younger, but I realized that as I got older, I had to get a real job and have a serious career and make money and buy a house and buy a car, and, and I've been bloody miserable the whole time. And I think that life is too short for that, don't you? Or it could be too long, one or the other. So if it's too short, God forbid life ends now and you look back over your life and go, I didn't do any of the things that I wanted to do because I allowed somebody to steal my dream versus life's really long 
and you look back over a very long life of a lousy, stinking, rotten job that you never enjoyed, and what a waste of time. So, what do you want to do? Why do you want to do it? And bloody go do it. How about that? Then if somebody tells you that you can't do it, here's a great suggestion. Rather than share with people what you're going to do, uh, because as soon as you open yourself up for that, is it possible that there will always be people who are negative about what you want to do? Uh, and it's, and I'll, in their defense, is it possible that there are lots of other people in your life or in the world that have a lousy, stinking, rotten job who are regretful of that lousy, stinking, rotten job and wish that they had of? So they're doing something now that they don't love, but they wish they had become a rock star, a sporting star, an artist, a dancer. They were a creator or an inventor and they never did that because somebody stole their dream. So is it possible that when you share your dream, they either don't want you to have a dream because it would prove that their life's pretty bloody lousy, or uh, they just don't think it's possible because it wasn't possible for them. So they then don't think it's possible for you. And that's my defense of parents and partners and people who really love you. Uh, they obviously don't want you to fail. If somebody really cares about you, they want you, surely they want you to be successful. And if they think you could fail, which is why parents often say you need a backup plan, because what if you fail? And I'm, they often don't put that on the end. But isn't that what backup plan actually means? We don't think that you're going to be successful in your dream, so you better have a backup plan. Uh, the great parents that I've had the privilege to be associated with, uh, whether by reading somebody's autobiography or authorised biography, or actually meeting parents like this, which is such a pleasure, parents who actually want their children to follow their dream, to follow their passion, to do what they're really excited about. Uh, that's they're the ones that I've just say if you have those parents in your life please be so appreciative of them and thank them every day for being supportive of you but if you don't have parents like that and I didn't then I still I can't have I couldn't not be who I am because my parents didn't want me to do that so my story is, a, is an interesting one and I don't apologize for it because I can't it's my story and I'm not telling the world that this is what you should do but I knew this is what I wanted to do. And I ran away from home. Uh, literally, I was in private boarding school. My parents were away on, on holidays. I packed my bags, got on a train. I went from Melbourne to Sydney in Australia. And I became a group exercise instructor. I found the health club that I wanted to work in. I had already been working as, as a salesperson at markets in Melbourne. Uh, so I had, I had money. Uh, so I didn't leave home destitute. I had money to work with. I had learnt some interesting life skills by the time I was 15, which is when I left home, ran away from home. Uh, and I began my life as an entrepreneur, as a, and I'll rephrase that because I'm technically an entrepreneur. I've never started my own business. I've always gone into other people's businesses and helped make that business grow. Uh, I started that at 10 years of age. I did that right through to when I left at all, all the way through to 15. Uh, and then I went into, into health clubs and did exactly the same thing. I added value to the health club and helped, it help, helped the health club grow. And the only reason I could do that is because I had my own support. And I will thank my, my father for this. I'm so grateful. He taught me over and over and over again, the best place to find a helping hand is at the end of your own arm. So to cut a very long story short, I used my own hands at the end of my own arm to give me the helping hand. I used my brain, I used my street smarts, I used my driving passion. I worked out exactly what I wanted to do and even though I didn't know exactly how to do it, I always ask this question, if you really want to do something, will you find a way? So the very special story I tell, I um, the first time I did group exercise, there was two people who came to our school and taught group exercise to the whole school because it was raining. It's free water coming out of the sky. That was the day I decided I was going to be a, a fitness professional, exercise professional. I didn't know what I was going to call myself back then, but I knew this was going to be my career path. And I went to the school principal and I said, excuse me, sir, how much did you pay those people to teach us exercise? And he said, $30. I said, I'll do it for 25 
Uh, the school didn't need to save five dollars, but I had a driving force. He could see the passion in my eyes, and I, that's one of the. I'm so grateful because that school principal saw my passion, saw my drive and ambition, and gave me an opportunity. And I'm very, very thankful for that. So he said, "Yes, you can teach group exercise to the school, and the next time there's free water coming out of the sky, uh, I did." Now I didn't know how to teach group exercise, but I found a way. <laughs> Because when you've got a driving force, and I'll ask you the question, if you really want something, will you find a way to do it? Will you find a way to get it? So I practice and practice and practice and practice and practice. And when the day arrived that I had to stand up in front of my school, because I was given the opportunity to do so, I was ready. Uh, I didn't know that I could do it, but I'd been practicing enough to know that I could get up there and give it a crack. And I loved it, and I have been a group exercise instructor, an exercise professional, a personal exercise coach, a health club manager, uh, somebody who's been passionate about being healthy, fit, and strong for the rest of my life. Uh, that's just my personal story. Without the support of my family, without without the support of, uh, it, you know, I had plenty of people who told me that you can't do it. And I will add to that, because I was a woman, because I had blonde hair, there's a lot of that. You can't be successful with blonde hair because that's, you know, you're a blonde bimbo. No tertiary education, uh, no really high school education. Uh, and when I ran away from home, I moved to a suburb in Sydney, Australia called Campbelltown, which was a very low socioeconomic area. Uh, I worked in health clubs there for a very long time and I bought property there and I made that my home. But a lot of people said to me, you can't be successful because of you're from Campbelltown. So I want to share with you that there will be barriers that people put up for you, whether they, they do that because they care about you or whether they do that because they just don't want to see you succeed. Uh, so I was told blonde hair, woman, wrong suburb, no tertiary education, you can't be successful in business. Uh, and I will tell you, the, well, not the end of that story, but a really interesting part of that story is I ended up on the BRW Young Rich List in Australia. So I was one of the richest people in Australia under the age of 40. And there was a lot of interesting comments from people in my life, particularly from my family, who said to me, oh, you do have a real job. <laughs> Uh, it's interesting how when you are successful, whether it's only financially successful, but I would like to consider that success is a lot more than that. I think that it's being healthy, fit and strong. Yes, having a career or business that you love. Yes, being financially free. And yes, having great relationships in your life. I think that's a really nice combination of success. And I share that with you because that's why the MAX program exists. Everything about the MAX program, every session, every... Uh, quiz, every knowledge check, every part of the lifetime education, every part of personal coaching is designed for you to be healthy, fit and strong for the rest of your life and help other people to do the same. It's designed to make sure that you have a career or business that you love. That will then give you financial security and freedom for the rest of your life and all the communication skills to have a great relationship with yourself and a great relationship with all the people in your life. So the big part of the relationship with all the other people in your life is even if they tell you, you can't do it, it's not possible, it won't work for you, how about prove them wrong? Respectfully and kindly, but why don't you just go and prove them wrong? Rather than argue with, I'm going to do it, I can do it, you should support me, why don't you support me? Why don't you just go and do it and then tell them what you've done, not what you're going to do? And that was a really interesting thing for me because my father, who really wanted me to be a lawyer, ended up being my biggest supporter. He used to call me his jumping daughter because I taught group exercise for 23 years. And he used to come to my classes and watch me teach group exercise. And you could see his face. He was so incredibly proud of his daughter. Now, I've got three, three brothers, or three sisters and a brother who are highly educated, tertiary educated, all became school teachers. Uh, and I'm sure that he was very proud of all of them. I just happened to come along 11 years later after they were all grown pretty much. And it was interesting to see a man who was not supportive of me become very supportive of me because I became very good at what I did. And I share that with you because wouldn't it have been dis dis very disrespectful of me if I had become an average exercise instructor, an average exercise professional, if I'd run health clubs that were just getting by? 
See, when I ended up on the BRW Young Rich list, it wasn't just for being successful in my personal wealth, but we're also on the BRW fastest growing companies in Australia two years in a row. So successful business. And of course, that takes discipline, that takes focus, it takes commitment. You've got to be a different kind of person to have a successful business and have a successful career. And I think that part of that, that's being respectful to your family. So right now, if you've got people in your life who are not supportive of you or they don't want you to chase your dreams or they're telling you that it's not possible or you can't follow or chase your dreams, what about this? What about just be quiet and very peacefully and quietly go and do your thing? Do the 10,000 hours. And that I haven't picked that number out of my backside. Uh, every, every success study in the world without fail will all share that whatever you're passionate about, you start to become the very best at it after 10,000 hours of training, studying, education. 10,000 hours are going to pass you by anyway. So if you've got a driving force inside you to be really good at something, to achieve something, put in the hours, put in the time, do the study, do the education, become the very best at your passion. And then share with your family, with your friends, what you've done. Could that be a different story? And once again, in the defense of your family and friends and the people that care about you, is it possible that we often talk about what we're going to do and then we don't do it? And this is something, again, that I I deal with every day because I will talk to the person who shares their dream with me and then I talk to the person who thinks that they can't achieve their dream. And it often goes like this. They've told me so many times they're going to start a business, they're going to lose weight, they're going to become successful, they're going to do this, do that, and they've never done any of it. So why would it be different this time? And in that person's defense, that's fair enough. So instead of telling people what we're going to do, huh? (laughs) how about be quiet, do the study, do the training, do the education, do the 10,000 hours, achieve the goal, and then have, and you don't even have to tell them. Somebody else will tell them, did you know? And that's what happened with my family. Did you know that Rowie was on the BRW Young Rich List? She's one of the richest people in Australia under the age of 40. Did you know that that her company was two years in a row on the fastest growing companies in Australia? Did you know that? Because that kind of stuff gets a bit of press. Now, you don't have to get um, media coverage for that. You don't have to get press coverage for that. Your family will know if you are doing what you love to do and you're successful at it. And here's a great question. If you're loving what you do, you're doing what you're passionate about. If you do the education and training and learning and ongoing education, training and learning, and you add massive value to people's lives, that's what I call a sweet spot, is it possible that your business will be successful, your career will be successful, you will feel successful, and then everybody can notice? So rather than telling people what you're going to do, how about go do it and let them observe for themselves how you did it? Wow, she's done it. Oh my God, he said he was going to be a sports strength and conditioning coach, and he is. He said he was going to open a gym, and he did. He said he was going to get a 1,000 members at his health club, and he has. He said he was going to open up a franchise of, of personal training studios, and he did. She said she was going to be a successful, successful businesswoman, and she is. She's a sayer, and she's a doer, rather than she says a lot but doesn't do anything. How about say nothing and just do and then let the world observe what you've done? The only difference or the only exception to that I would ask is this. If you have children or if you have people who are observing your life who look up to you, uh, is it possible that we have to live the example? How will our kids know it's possible to have a career that they love, to be financially free, to have great relationships, to be healthy, fit and strong if they don't have somebody that sets that example? So I'm asking you very personally, don't let somebody steal your dream. Please don't let somebody steal your dream. Do everything that is required. Use your own helping hand at the end of your own arm to make sure that you do everything you need to do, not to just be average at your dream, but to be the best at it. So if you want to sing, be a rock star. If you want to uh, act in movies, be be a movie star. If you want to... Uh, create your own business, make it successful. If you want to be an exercise professional, be the best exercise professional. Don't let average creep into your life anywhere because that will give people something to talk about. She said she was going to be an exercise professional and she is, but she's pretty average. He said he was going to open a gym, but it's only just getting by. 
he said he was going to do boot camps, but those boot camps aren't very successful. He's just, you know, they're scraping through every week. Who wants to scrape through? Who wants to be average? Would it be really respectful if you have a goal and a dream to follow that dream, chase that goal, achieve the goal, and then set the example for the little kids? And last but not least, that's my question, because that was a goal that I set at 13. At 13 years of age, I said to myself, I am going to do what I love. I'm going to be an exercise instructor. I'm going to be healthy, fit and strong for the rest of my life. I'm going to be financially free because I'd seen people argue about money and and not have enough money and I didn't want to live my life like that. And I saw horrible relationships and I didn't want to have anything to do with that. I wanted respectful, kind people in my life. So I set a goal at 13 years of age that I'd be healthy, fit and strong, have a career that I love, I'd be financially free and I'd have great people in my life. And I set a realistic goal. I was 13 and I said, by the time I'm 50, I'm going to have achieved all of those things. I went and had a look at some of the 50-year-olds in my life. When I was 13, I wanted some people to prove to me that my goal was, could happen. So I talked to some 50-year-olds about, are you happy? Do you have a career that you love? Are you healthy, fit and strong? Are you rich? And unfortunately, now I'm sure there's people that have all of those things together, but I couldn't find any. I found some people that had some, but not others. Uh, But I really didn't find anybody that I could look up to and say, aha, look at that. It is possible to be healthy, fit and strong, have a career that you love, be financially free and have great people in your life. So I set a goal at 13. By the time I was 50, if a little girl of 13 ever came to me and said, Rowie, is it possible? Can I do it? I wouldn't have to say, yes, you can do it. I want to be able to say, have a look. Not me tell them, but have a look at my life. I ran away from home. I don't have a tertiary education. I'm a woman. I've got blonde hair. Everybody told me that I couldn't do it, but I've lived my life in a passionate, exciting way, woken up every day doing what I love. And here I am, an old lady now. And I love saying old lady because for, 30, for a 13-year-old, a 50-year-old is not just old. A 60-year-old is bloody ancient. <laughs> I love being ancient because I'm living and breathing the example I want other people to know is possible. How about you? If you have family, if you have children, if you have people who don't believe in you, wouldn't it, wouldn't it be nice if you could set their living, breathing example for them of being healthy, fit and strong, having a career or business that you're passionate about, and it is successful and profitable, you are financially free, and you might then be able to say to those people, uh, please be respectful of me, otherwise I don't want to have you in my life. Or they might be in awe of you because you've achieved something that they said wasn't possible. And last but not least, please don't be too harsh on the people that that try and steal your dream. Uh, They might just be coming from a place of somebody stole their dream and now they're living a life without a dream. And they might be trying to protect you. So isn't the ultimate answer to that to be successful, to be profitable, to have a life that's beautiful and then people can see that it's possible? (laughs) 